everyone. Welcome back. I am Michael Jolly, and I am joined by Nathan Arthur of Preemptive. Welcome, Nathan. Hello. Thank you. I'm so glad, glad you're able here. to join us. Yeah, yeah. It feels great to be a part of this. So I know that Preemptive has been, I feel like they've been in like my back pocket ever since I've been a .NET developer. Uh, uh -huh. Dofuscator is just kind of included, I think, with Visual Studio, right? That's right. Dofuscator community has been a part of Visual Studio since the earliest days of Visual Studio. It's it's right there on the tools menu, or at least in the installer for everybody. Yeah, you know, it took me a long time to realize it wasn't just part of Visual Studio. It's it's just uh, always in my toolbox. Yeah, that's right. We've actually been working on the branding a little, so you see the preemptive name a little more. Yeah, yeah. Get used to us. Yep. So my understanding, I've heard that there's a new version of Dofuscator. That's right. We just, a couple weeks ago, put out 6.0 which is our first major release in 12 years, wow. right? We have we have been on what the 4 series. We actually went straight from 4 to 6, uh, and we've been on the 4 series for 12 years, trying not to break anything. And, and so, yeah, we're pretty proud of it. So Brand new. are there any, like, new features? Like, what's the difference that I would see in going, like, 4 to 6? Yep. Uh, so the major thing that 6 enables is cross-platform support. We get we get the ability to run Dofuscator in the build components on Windows, Linux, and Mac, uh, and, and a whole variety of, you know, .NET Core mm -hmm. and Mono and uh, Xamarin builds and all those things. Um, we've had some support for some of those things, but actually running on different OSs is the brand new thing with 6.0. That's awesome. Yeah, because that is mm -hmm. that is the new hotness right now with .NET Core that's and right. with .NET 5. That's right. Yeah, Microsoft really made it possible, right? Without without the work they did to the underlying platform, we would have had a much harder journey to try to build something cross-platform that worked oh, yeah. the way it does. So, and then I also learned about this other new tool you've got out, JS Defender. That's right. Uh, we have seen a lot of demand from our existing customers and really from the market in general for JavaScript protection, right? People looking for obfuscation and sort of the runtime checks uh, idea for JavaScript. And and we, we started dipping our toes in that water last fall and had our first release in January. Uh, and it's it's actually taken off really well. Even even our existing Dofuscator customers have really taken it up. Uh, there's a lot of people doing ASP development who need you know sort of back end and front end protection. So I have some experience with Dofuscator, and I, I know it's kind of like keeping my code safe essentially. Is that what JS Defender is doing for JavaScript? Same basic idea, right? Now, so Dofuscator operates on the IL, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not at the source layer. JS Defender, it's JavaScript, so it right. operates on the source. Uh, but it's still the same basic obfuscation transforms, things that you're used to, like renaming and control flow. Uh, they've got some different names, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also things like runtime checks, like the domain lock that you know checks to make sure that that you're running on the domain you expect to be running on and not you know somewhere else. Wow. Well, that's really nice. Is there, is that something mm -hmm. you could like give us a demo of real quick? Yeah, yeah, I can show you. We actually have a web demo of uh, JS Defender that you can see. Uh, so I'm over here just in my browser looking at looking at our website over here for the online demo. And you can scroll down here and we expose most of the settings and options that you can use for JS Defender here. Uh, it's meant to be integrated into your build, right? You're not really supposed to come here and paste all your code in. Uh, so there's a tool you download and integrate into your build. But this is a nice way to show just what it does and how it does it. Uh, and if you haven't seen obfuscation before, it's a great way to see you know, the effect obfuscation has on your code. Right, so this code will run just the same way as that code does, but obviously it's much, much harder to understand and reverse engineer than. Well, that's fantastic. The stuff and on that the could, just like Dofuscator, that could just be like included as part of my build process. That's right. And, that's and right. brought as part of my everyday tooling and everything. That's right. There's a there's a bunch of tools you can download and integrate into your build depending on the type of project you have. Uh, there's different plugins to make that really easy to do. Uh, and then, yeah, every time you build, you get you get protected output. That's really nice. Nathan, thanks so much for sharing this with us. That was some really cool stuff. Yeah, you're welcome. I can't wait to try that with my JavaScript. I've been doing a lot of JavaScript here lately, as a lot of us, I think, are. Thank you for joining us as well. We're going to get you back to that build post-show action. Enjoy.